What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Mechanism. And today guys, we're going to be discussing ore processing and more specifically, we're going to be talking about Mechanism's three times ore processing. So Mechanism's ore processing setups pretty much build upon each other. They start at one times and they can increase up to five times. So three times ore processing is pretty much middle of the road, but it's significantly easier to set up than you'd think. After going caving once, I had enough resources to set this up and then have all that is left in this chest right here. Now, the reason I have all this stuff left is because there's no reason to process this and pretty much just cook it down until we have the setup done so that I get the most out of my ores. And that's why I would suggest you guys set this up pretty much first thing in your world after you have basic power, just because it's gonna allow you to get the most out of your resources. So there is a decent amount that we have to go through today. And luckily for us, by setting this up, we're actually gonna be upgrading our ability to use the metallurgic infusers. Uh, don't pay attention to Wayla if you're looking up there. It's been confusing me a ton. I think I mentioned it last episode, but it's listing these as enrichment chambers. These are the metallurgic infusers. But if you don't know, if you take the additives that you can put into metallurgic infusers, so if we take a look at redstone, uh, we can pretty much go to it and we can use it to make, let's look at uses we should be able to put it into compressed redstone. So you put this into the enrichment chamber and we'll discuss this a little bit more in depth later, but pretty much just for the cost of adding some power, you get compressed redstone, which is going to allow you to put it into the metallurgic infuser and get a significantly larger amount of additives out of it than you would have previously. So it just costs a little bit of power, but we're gonna be going over that today too. And that's why I also think this is another great thing to set up early on. So this chest should have pretty much everything we need in it. There is a little bit missing here just because when we set up the electrolytic separator, one of the pieces is going to require some dust. I believe it's two osmium dust and iron dust and a gold dust, and we can't get those yet. So we are gonna have to hold off on that a little bit, but we should be able to make the rest of the setup and then get the dust and then hop back and finish off everything. So the first thing that we're gonna need to craft is going to be two enrichment chambers because we're gonna be using one for an actual enrichment chamber and then one is used to craft the purification chamber. So we're gonna do the regular enrichment chamber. If you're curious, all these different factories pretty much will allow you, they're pretty much upgraded versions of what we're working on today, which we will eventually get to. They allow more space in them, which is great if you're processing a lot of stuff, but for now, the regular chambers should be good enough. We're gonna be making a lot of steel casing today, but I'm gonna do it one at a time just because I wanna make sure we're not accidentally using resources we're not supposed to, and we should be able to make one enrichment chamber now. I actually forgot while I was talking there that we need a second enrichment chamber. So there we go. So we got the two enrichment chambers that we need. Now we can go to the purification chamber. And while I'm doing this, I just wanna let you guys know, uh, some people commented on my mouse or my keyboard and my mouse from the previous episode. Uh, so if you did not see the Rotary Craft series early on, uh, I asked people about my uh, keyboard specifically because it is very clicky. If you're curious what this noise is right here, that's my keyboard. Um, I have a Razer Black Widow. It is a mechanical keyboard, as I'm sure you could tell. Um, but pretty much everyone said we like the noise of it, so you know, keep it in the videos. So that is why it's in the videos. If you have a problem with it, please let me know. Also, I know these uh, wind turbines back here, or wind generators are kind of loud right now. Um, so yeah, if there's any issues with that, please let me know. Uh, not trying to be annoying, but people actually did prefer it in the previous episodes. So. Uh, we did just make the purification chamber. For the most part, all this stuff is just gonna be basic control circuits and enriched alloy. Um, so yeah, if you want an idea of how much it's gonna take, you could just look at the numbers in the chest from earlier in the video, and then pretty much make all of those simultaneously in your two metallurgic infusers. Next thing we're gonna need is going to be the crusher, which does require two buckets of lava, which is a little weird, but uh, we do have those right there. It's gonna take another steel casing, and there we go. So the nice thing is you do get the buckets back uh, but yeah, you do have to go fill them up and now we have the crusher and then we need to get the energized smelter So that is going to be right here and Just another steel casing and I'm pretty sure we're gonna need another one of those So all that stuff would have been used for the steel casing just because that's one of the only things we have glass for But now we have the energized smelter So the last thing we're gonna need to get is going to be the pump and this is one thing that might be optional. I bet a lot of you guys are playing this in mod packs that are watching the video. The pump is probably your worst way to go about getting water just because it consumes a lot of power and a lot of mod packs have better ways of getting water. Um, you know, if you wanna use like an aqueous accumulator or something that will do the job just fine. But yeah, this pretty much is gonna be a huge power sink for your whole setup. So if you can get away without using the electric pump, you should try your best. So last steel casing that we're gonna need 
and there we have it the electric pump now like i said we do have some stuff left in our inventory that is going to be for the electrolytic separator which is what's going to take the water and separate it for us into the hydrogen and oxygen and the part right here the electrolytic core is going to require some dust and then we just pretty much need a lot of enriched alloy for the rest of it but we need to get this dust from the enrichment chamber so we're going to set this whole thing up first we're going to leave a space for this and then we'll go back and actually work with that Last thing actually that I'm forgetting that we need to set up is going to be mechanical pipes. So this is again, optional mechanical pipes pretty much would be fluid pipes. They can transfer as you look at the capacity it's mill buckets per tick. So don't let the name fool you. It is going to be transferring liquid or fluid, but it's not actually called a fluid pipe. So that's what we're going to be using just to get the water out of the electric pump because of how it orients itself. So the rest of this is going to get set up right over here. Now I haven't done anything to make a base and I probably should have because that death right there was from a creeper just wandering down this hill and into the base. But uh, yeah, I've been busy gathering stuff. So we're going to be setting it up right here and eventually I will move it but pretty much just going to set it up in a line like it's supposed to previously i've set it up in like a square, but it just makes it a hassle for piping things in. So I'm going to extend this power. Uh, one interesting thing, I did use this diamond pick on the cable and it crashed earlier. Didn't even, I, I didn't even get to hit it. It just, I went to hit it and it crashed. So I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to punch it for now until I actually get, um, the equivalent of a wrench. I haven't made the configurator yet. So yeah. Um, next thing we're going to be doing is setting this up. It's going to start with the electric pump and we're only going to need one bucket of water. I don't know if this is intended. If I recall correctly, the last time I messed around with the mechanism, you needed to keep um, pretty much an infinite pool of water. But when I tested it out, the electric pump was actually able to sustain on one bucket of water. Uh, I'm not sure if that was just a glitch that was occurring, but we're going to see if it works. So we can hook it up right. I guess we can hook it up right here. I want to leave some space over there. Yeah, so we can hook it up right there. Uh, power is going to go in the back. We're going to pull the water out the top and we can throw the water down right there. And then if we take a look in here, it is sucking it up and nothing's happening there. I assume that might be intended just because uh, typically you make an infinity pool and water is pretty much an infinite resource anyway. Uh, I doubt it would work the same way if you were trying to pump a different fluid in, but uh, yeah, it works with water. Hopefully that's supposed to be intended because I do recall when you start adding speed upgrades to the electric pump, actually sustaining the water below it, uh, back when I used to do that, I think it was the daybreaker pack became a huge issue. Uh, but we're not gonna be adding any upgrades today, so it's not anything we have to worry about. So we're gonna put down the mechanical pipes right above this, fill that up, and then it's gonna come down over here. And we're going to bring it down in the side over here, or actually, I guess we can put it up here and break this one on the side. I'm not going to use my pick on it just because I'm super afraid that it's going to crash. And I really don't want that. But yeah, the reason we're doing this is because we're going to be putting the electrolytic separator right here. And I'm leaving space over here just in case we do want to pull out the excess uh, hydrogen that we're going to be getting. If we do eventually want to store it in a tank for a jetpack or something along those lines. Uh, and then the electrolytic separator is going to go here and it's going to go directly next to the purification chamber because that's where the oxygen is going to be going. That's the whole reason behind this setup. So the oxygen going directly through there, if we place the uh, electrolytic separator right here, I'll talk about it later when we do, but it'll pretty much be able to uh, automatically transfer the oxygen over into this and throw down the purification chamber first. The next one that we're going to need is going to be the crusher, which is just going to need power and go right next to this. The next thing that we're going to need is going to be the enrichment chamber, which is going to go right here. And it looks like we have to extend this one more for the energized smelter. So these all have the ability to take upgrades. If you click on this, it's actually a pretty cool upgrade screen. I guess you could call it or UI that the, um, mechanism mod offers, but we don't have any, pretty much you'll throw them in here. They'll go and it'll list them and their amount. And then over on the no selection side, it'll tell us all the details about it. Um, we can add a lot speed energy. Apparently there's a new one muffling to decrease the sound that these make not super worried about that, but you can also then request to get them out and remove them. It's pretty awesome. Um, but we're not going to add any of those yet. I'm not super worried about the speed at which it runs. And now what we need to do since these should all have power, is we need to actually go and put some ores in the enrichment chamber so that we can make the electrolytic separator. So if we go back to the electrolytic separator and take a look, we need the electrolytic core, which is going to take two osmium and iron dust and gold dust. So we need one gold, one osmium and one iron. Each one should get us two. So we are going to have a little bit extra. We can start with the osmium. 
Uh, it's not super fast, but if you pretty much just have a bunch of ores like I do, you can set them in a hopper, allow this to process, and you should be good to go. And we will set up the automation for it in one second once I get the electrolytic separator down, but these are really easy to automate. Uh, it's really great, and the fact that you set them up in a line, pretty much just gonna put a chest at the end in a second, and we should be able to throw a hopper on top, leave it there, and uh, let our whole set of ores process, which will be great because I have a ton in there, especially iron. I should be getting almost six stacks of iron out of this whole thing, which will be great. Okay, so there we go. Now, while we're doing this, I want to say thank you guys so much for the amazing feedback on the first episode. It got almost a thousand views and over a hundred likes in the first like 36 hours of it being up. I don't think I've ever gotten such great support on an episode before. Uh, what are we missing for this? Are we missing iron for this? No. Are we missing enriched alloy? No. Electrolytic corn? No. Are we missing redstone? Oh my gosh. Okay. I have a lot of redstone. Um, but yeah, I have not gotten such great support. You guys supported me great uh, a ton with Rotary Craft. It was great. But this one, I, I hope that means you guys are excited for it because uh, it, everyone seemed to be. Okay, so pretty much the electrolytic separator is filling up with water. Uh, you can see that this bar in the center where you would normally click to show recipes is going to be white. If it's not running, if it doesn't have water, if it doesn't have any power flowing into it, then it's going to actually stop or it'll be flickering. Um, but now it's white completely just because that means it's continuously processing this. And you can see the hydrogen is significantly higher than the oxygen. That is because it's filled up the purification chamber's internal buffer. And one thing to keep in mind is that right down here where you see um, below the water and below the power, it says idle and has some buttons next to those. You can pretty much change these so it's either idle, dump, or dumping excess. So that right now, if the hydrogen fills up, it's going to stop and the oxygen is not going to get produced anymore. So we need to make it dumping excess. So what that means is when this caps out, it'll have the ability to continue running and uh, it won't, I guess it stays there. So let's go to idle and allow this to fill up completely before we set it to dumping excess. But what it's gonna do is it's pretty much just gonna say, okay, anything more than we need that we produce, we're going to get rid of, and that'll allow the oxygen to keep producing. Now, a couple of things you could do differently would be to set up buffers between this, um, using tanks for the gas. So you could put one over here and one over here, and then have that dump into the uh, purification chamber. And the main reason you do that is just so if you dump a bunch of ores in here at once, uh, it won't actually back up while it tries to create more oxygen at a faster rate. So now we can do dumping excess. Oh, and it looks like it holds it at uh, 1888. I thought it'd stay pretty much full, but you can see the oxygen continues being produced now because it's pretty much just getting rid of any of the hydrogen that it doesn't actually need. Um, I would suggest that you can either reprocess the hydrogen, which we'll go over later for power, or you can use it for a jetpack. Either one is fine. Um, so I would suggest you do store it. I'm just dumping it right now because I don't have anywhere to store it. But another thing to keep in mind is with Whale, if you're getting a little confused, it seems all of these are listed as enrichment chambers, and this is a rotary condens, uh, yeah, condens, what the heck? Condensentrator. What? I don't even know what that is. Um, but yeah, so it looks like everything's listed a little odd with Whale. I might actually get rid of it just because of that. I don't know. But everything should be good to go here, so we can make a chest and a hopper and set the rest of this up. So I guess I should set the iron through. I'm actually gonna do something bad and I'm just going to put the iron in a furnace and have it cooked down while I make the hopper so that I can dump all the stuff in there. And where's the rest of my wood? The rest of my wood's over here. So we're gonna make two chests. We're gonna put one on top of the hopper and one at the very end. And then we should be good to leave all of this in there in the system to process and call it a day. So one is gonna go on top of this, one's gonna go over here and now we can set up the automation for this. So pretty much anything that you're able to automate with it dumping somewhere or taking from somewhere, you're going to go into the side config. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to change is auto eject. Right now it's off. You can click this button in the top right to turn it on, which pretty much means that if it has the ability to output it, it will. And this one's going to have input, which is dark red for all of these at the top, output, which is dark blue on the side. And you can pretty much forget about the rest. This one's just gonna be, if we look at these, this one's gonna be extra and then energy. Those are both irrelevant for the time being. And then you can see dark blue is always gonna be on the right for these, which is great, but you gotta turn auto eject on all of them. We're gonna right click to get rid of the red and then we're gonna left click over here to get the red. And then the green on the bottom is energy, again, irrelevant. Right click, left click, auto eject. And lastly, we're gonna do the same thing with this one. We're going to right click, left click, and auto eject. Now that should be all good. And the reason this one is just inputting it from the top is because we're gonna put a hopper up there, which should be good to go. 
We actually do need to make one more chest too, just to actually craft the hopper. So there we go. And there we are. So we got the hopper. We got the chest for it. So we can throw this on top. We can throw that on top there. That's going to bother me, the fact that it's on that side. Uh, <laughs> um, but we can grab out all of our ores now. And this is going to, without a doubt, create a bottleneck in the system solely because uh, we're not going to be producing things fast enough. So I will have to add a bunch of upgrades, which I'll probably do off camera. But we can dump this in here. You can see this is going to start running and it's going to drain the oxygen I guess it actually doesn't drain it that fast just because we don't have any upgrades in this either. So this process is relatively slow too, but this is where a lot of noise is going to come from. So now we have the crusher running and when all these start running at once, you're going to get a lot of noise. This one should be humming. I think yes, that one's just going to be some humming. And then the last one is going to be the energized smelter. This whale is screwed with me so much. It's it really is. I'm so used to looking up there for what it is. That one's the loud humming. Um, but I guess none of them are as loud as the, uh, wind generators. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Pretty much one thing I do want to cover, I guess, really quick that I forgot is if you're only going to do a two times ore processing setup, that would just be the enrichment chamber next to the energized smelter. And so pretty much just start here. And then it's really simple, which is why I said it's really not even worth doing um, since this whole setup is relatively cheap. And then the one time Zorb processing would just be using power instead of actually using um, coal for it, which would just be the energized smelter. And we did kind of briefly cover using the enrichment chamber with coal, with diamonds, with redstone, any of that to pretty much get the compressed version of it, any additives that you put in the metallurgic infuser, and you'd get significantly more from it. Uh, I'm not going to throw anything in there right now just because we have the ores processing, but you can do that. You can easily see it in the recipes. And I would suggest once you actually have the enrichment chamber to pretty much do that with everything you're going to put into the metallurgic infuser. Pretty much because if you don't and you have the power, it's just a waste. It's a big waste when I say that too. It's an enormous waste, especially when you start using diamonds and stuff that's more expensive as the additives. But yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you found it entertaining or informative in any way, please uh, feel free to give it a like. And as always, please post in the comments if you you know have any feedback, any questions, anything like that. It's what I'm here for. And I will talk to you guys later.